welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to give an overview of what you can expect when taking higher chemistry. Your experience will be broadly similar everywhere, but obviously all schools might teach things in a different order and assessment and skills will vary. The higher chemistry course builds on your National 5 knowledge and extends this into new everyday situations. In addition to chemistry knowledge, you will also develop research skills, enhance your practical and numeracy skills. The course is divided into four units that can be taught in any order or mixed together. The first unit is called Chemical Changes in Structure. This unit covers periodicity, which is the study of the periodic table and the trends due to the structure of atoms. Building on material learnt in National 5, Structure and Bonding looks in more detail at covalent bonding and introduces intermolecular forces and their impact on the properties of substances. Basic redox was covered in National 5. Writing more complex reduction and oxidation half equations are covered in higher, as well as the focus on identification and use of oxidising and reducing agents. Some practical skills that you are likely to cover in this unit are preparing a standard solution, redox titrations and investigating properties due to intermolecular forces, such as viscosity and polarity. Unit 2 is called Nature's Chemistry. This unit has a number of different topics that place carbon chemistry in everyday contexts. Systematic carbon chemistry is covered throughout the topic through systematic naming and structures of different families. The properties, structures and uses of alcohols and carboxylic acids are covered in National 5 and recapped and extended in higher. This leads into the esters topic, another chemical family. Fats and oils are esters and their structure and the links to their properties are covered in detail. Uses of fats and oils are presented in the reaction to form soaps and detergents. The mode of action of soap is covered, and linked to that is the mode of action of emulsions, which are presented in the terms of use for food. More food chemistry is covered in the form of proteins, where the reactions to make and hydrolyse proteins are looked at, as well as proteins as enzymes. Oxidation of food is looked at through the use of aroma molecules in the form of alcohols and carbonyls. And the final section is related to fragrances and skin care, where terpenes and antioxidants are introduced. Throughout this unit, links are made to the bonding and intermolecular forces that were covered in Unit 1. The properties of the substances in each topic are related back to intermolecular forces. Practical skills that you are likely to cover in this section include safe heating of substances, preparing standard solutions, titrations, distillation and using oxidising agents. Unit 3 is called Chemistry and Society. This unit looks at industrial chemical processes. There is a focus on chemical calculations and their application to processes. These calculations are based on those from National 5 and extend them further into molar volume, excess, percentage yield and atom economy. Controlling the rate looks at the use of collision theory to change the rate of reaction. The effect of temperature is covered in detail and activation energy and enthalpy changes are introduced. Enthalpy is covered in more detail in the chemical energy topic. In National 5, the energy released by fuels was learnt this is extended to the enthalpy of combustion and higher. More methods of calculating energy changes are also covered in Hess's law and use of bond enthalpies. Another important aspect of industrial chemistry is the concept of equilibrium. Equilibrium is defined and the factors affecting equilibrium are covered in terms of optimising processes. Chromatography and titration are covered in chemical analysis, however these may be covered in other areas of the course. Practical skills likely to be covered in this unit are determining energy released from fuels, titration, chromatography, use of a balance and safe heating. Unit 4 is called Research in Chemistry and covers common chemical apparatus, general practical techniques and the reporting of experimental work, a lot of which is often covered throughout the course as part of the practical work that happens within different topics. The formal SQA assessment is split into two parts, an exam and an assignment. There are two exam papers totalling three hours. The first paper is 40 minutes long and has 25 multiple choice questions. The second is a two hour and 20 minute long extended answer paper of 95 marks. The extended response answers include answers of one or two words, a sentence or two, calculations, graphs, diagrams, explain fully and open-ended questions. The best way to prepare for this is to practice past papers, which can be accessed on the SQA website. Like National 5, you have an assignment which is carried out in class and is worth 20% of your grade. There is a total of 8 hours for your assignment, 2 hours of which is dedicated to writing your final report. You'll be given a selection of topics to choose from. You will need to formulate an aim for your assignment and then plan and carry out an experiment to gather your data. 
Your experiment can be carried out in a group if necessary, but you must take an active part. You need to research background chemistry for your topic and find a second source of data to compare to. Once you have your experimental data, second source of data and some background information, you'll be able to write a report to present your findings. You're allowed to take some things into your write-up session, your candidate guide, experimental raw data, your second source and reference, and extracts from literature, but you can't take in any drafts or example calculations or graphs. You write your report under exam conditions and it's sent to the SQA for marking. I hope that you enjoy your higher chemistry course this year. I have lots of helpful videos for you to use throughout the year and more will be added. So subscribe if you're not already to be notified when they're uploaded. Follow me on Twitter at Miss Adams Chem for updates on new videos and Instagram Miss Adams Chemistry for daily flashcards. Bye for now.